Greetings, everyone. This is I'm Right. I'm Right. And I'm Jill Cox Cordova. I'm Anthony Cordova. And we're back. Oh, yes. I wonder if our listeners missed us last week. Well, or maybe they enjoyed an episode that they had heard before a long time ago, but that they had heard before. In fact, we got more likes on that one. Than we did the first time yeah, around. Something. We, it is we something. We may need to do that more often. We you know? might. We might need to. But this week we do have something new. In fact, I would uh, almost call it a series of newness. Yes. And uh, listeners, we're doing this because uh, I began to realize that singles are having a real hard time communicating with each other on the face to face. Right, because of the pandemic. Yes, and and we've also found out that um singles started with the, uh, you know, dating online and swiping left and swiping right. Relationships just became disposable because you knew, you know, the single person knew there's another single person a swipe away. So they were just So you you're saying that if they did date someone, they were easily replaceable. Yes. Yes. You as know. opposed to taking the time to really see if that person is for you or not. Ex- exactly. Exactly. So, you know, and, and I believe, this is my belief, is that when many of these singles even just went into the relationship, or I'm calling it a relationship, but they meet somebody on the quick, quick online. Well, that's a type of relationship. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, but. It was like a throwaway, you know, yeah, okay, I don't have anything to do, you know, next, 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 next. So they, they, it got to where they really weren't taking the time to find an actual meaningful relationship. Right. It was, they were playing the odds. That's right. You know, if I date a hundred people. So this week we are starting um, new episodes for single people, but we want our people, our listeners who are in committed relationships, whether you're married or not, mm-hmm. um, to know that this is also for you because chances are we all know someone who's single and perhaps you can help them out as well. So this week, our episode is called Single Life Shuffle. It's part of a segment that we call Stand By Your Stands. I think we should start off defining, sweetheart, what we mean by single life shuffle. We should. Shouldn't we? (laughs) I believe we should. What do we mean by that, Jill? Well, I think you should tell the story because you're the one that heard the report. Oh. Remember? Just put me on the spot. I like doing that. (laughs) I do like doing that. Well, it's, uh, you know, I alluded to it already in uh, our banter before we actually start talking about this topic. Um, but again, you know, singles were just like treating people like they're just throwaway. OK, you know, I'll I'll go through a hundred people uh-huh. and maybe I'll find someone within that playing the odds, you know, just wow. playing the I don't odds. I think I've ever dated a hundred people. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but so, now, but, but now um, the shift has been that um, many single people are, are still dating online, but they're taking more time to get to know that person before they even meet them. And then, so, which is a good thing. Right. But then once they meet them, everything goes into hyperdrive. Like, so they become, they, they, they establish a committed relationship. Very quickly, very quickly. Because, and part of the reason is once they know that person is health wise safe. Oh, yes. That's new, too. Like people used to, you know, just see if you were a stalker or not. Right. You know, would do background reports. But now people want to know what's your COVID status. Exactly. Or vaccination status. Right. So once they know that this person is safe, uh, again, they go into like hyperdrive and in a short time, they'll move in with each other. So now they don't. And in a short time, they'll get married. 
Well, well, yeah, in a, in a much shorter time. So they may move in with each other and be living together for, I don't know, six months and say, OK, let's get married. And the and, marriages are healthy. Oh, so it's actually a good thing they stay together. Yes, which is which is totally different than, you know, uh, our listeners know I, I had like a two year rule and, you know, I would take two years to get to know a person Yes, before I even, you know, going to like get married or something because uh, I found that it took that long. But this is a different uh, approach. Yes, it's um, a different age, though. And it, it, it is a different age. I still believe in you need to take some time to, to get to know a person. To get yes. To know a person. But uh, you can get to know quite a bit about a person if you are communicating online and or on the phone or by Zoom or something. You can get to know a person pretty intimately. So it's just. So what are the things you think people should look for if, if there's only a screen between them? The first thing I think a person should look for is honesty. Well, always. You always want that because otherwise, how do you trust someone? Yes, but how can you, you see you, that on, you, a, uh, on a little screen? You, you, Yes. People want honesty, but people don't always look for honesty. But how, you do, you, how do you look for it on a screen? Well, you have to be very keen and your conversations and paying attention to what a person says, um, if they begin to contradict, contradict themselves, um, you yes, know, you, you know can tell people, that in time, oh, you know, to, well, not some with some people, it, it's very easy, quick. You see it very quickly, very because, quickly, uh -huh. because in one sentence, they'll contradict themselves exactly. within one sentence. Exactly. So that's that's a red flag. But that's something a single person should not ignore. Don't don't tell yourself, oh, no one's perfect. <laughs> don't don't well, tell no yourself no one perfect. is perfect. But some things are real red flags. Like if you constantly find out that the things they say are not true, that's a red flag. So it doesn't matter how attractive that person is or or that they're wealthy or anything like that if they give you red flags pay attention pay attention and pay attention to your gut <laughs> yes I, th I think too often at least i know i used to be that way you know, I would get a funny, you know how they say you have butterflies when, when you're falling in love, mm -hmm. like someone makes you ha feel those butterflies. Yes. Some people, I, I literally had guttural reactions mm -hmm. too, and I would, I would ignore it like, oh, it's just me. I'm too picky. I'm too selective. Yeah. But I, then I would realize, oh, I was right all along. You're right all along. You know, yes. because for example, uh, nowadays, you know, people schedule video conferencing sessions, calls, you know, okay. it, it took me a while to realize that nowadays when people say, let's schedule a call, they mean camera uh, and mic yes. as opposed to a phone call. Yeah. Like a zoom call or right, something. Okay. Right. So I realized that people, um, you know, so people schedule those all the time, but if someone like bails on you last minute, yeah. They're probably going to bail on you in person, too, if they keep doing it. Oh, you know, abso like, absolutely. Like things happen. Don't get me wrong. And sometimes you do have to reschedule. Mm -hmm. But if they always find something better every time, they're going to do that in person. That, That's who they are. That That is true. Um, you know, the other thing I noticed about this new trend is that not, not just this new trend, but uh, dating in general. I've been finding out that um, a lot of single people, uh, being that supposedly air quotes, <laughs> the, the co uh, that COVID is almost over. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's not over, people. But but during that short time when the numbers were down and people started going back out, um, they realized that they had forgotten. What to do? <laughs> how, how to interact with people on yes. a face to face. To face to face, yes. Face to face. And there's a lot of nervousness um, 
within singles when they do meet someone new face to face. That is true because, you know, on a computer or a phone, you know, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could mute people just when they get on our nerves, right? You can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> but in person, you know, yes, you, you that's when you do see, you know, tw- uh, quirks, yes. little quirks. And you actually see that sense of nervousness that maybe you can hide on a device. Correct. So uh, many singles wanted to know how how do you handle that? You know, when you're when you're going on a first, which I'll say meeting date in oh, person. We're back to that. Yes. When you go on that first. But isn't the meeting date online? Well, yes. See, so so being at times a changing, I had I had to add something. So, so I would say that online, uh, when you're just communicating online with a person, that's your pre-meeting date. So that's, that's you pre-meeting online before you go for that real meeting date in person, which will be a short thing, you know, coffee or lunch or, you know, something like that, that you can get out of easy if it doesn't work well. Yes. And and I can see the difference between the two, because, again, online, they don't see your whole body. Correct. They, they, you know, if if you if you have a habit of tapping your feet when you get nervous, you don't see that online. Exactly. And then on online, you're in your own home. You're you're in your comfort zone. Right. So it's much easier not to be nervous. Right. Um, Right. And there there are aren't those distractions. So, for example, um, with some jerks out there if they're out in in public um they may have a wandering eye ah uh, yes that's exactly you know, what i was going to say you can't see say. that online exactly you know exactly so but the a lot of the question uh questions were well if i go on this first um meeting date um i'm going to be nervous cuz i haven't done this in such a long time and i i don't know how to say i don't know what i should say what i shouldn't say i don't know what my mannerisms are but that's where it's time to start that relationship off correctly and you just say look you know you announce really early look i'm really nervous about this yes and it's chances been are a long... they, they are too and they yeah. might be relieved yes. that you have it have confessed that actually yes yeah. so you know you you just be honest and sincere um which also sets everything up for a better relationship if you find that hey this is a person i want to pursue and see if we can really Imagine build something. Imagine that, starting your relationship off with honesty. Wow. Yes, yes. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. And, you know, it's 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 um like I have said before in, in our podcast is that everyone, when they meet someone face to face, is on their P's and Q's to right. make sure they don't do anything wrong or say anything wrong. Um, and they they try to present the best uh, version, version of, them. of themselves. Mm-hmm. It, yes. It's just human nature. Everybody's sure. going to. Sure. But, you want to make a good impression, but you also want to be who you are. Yeah. You know, that doesn't mean you have to tell everything in the first date. You Correct. know, because there may not be a second date anyway. Right. So you right. don't have to tell everything. Everything. But if, if you are feeling nervous, you should say, hey, you know, I'm nervous about this. Just, you know. And they may say the same thing or they may not be nervous. But now that they know that you're nervous, they will. Um, They'll give you a pass, probably. Yeah. yeah. Because chances are they're they're nervous, too. Maybe it's their first time of getting out. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So I, I, I know that we have been married for some time now, but i 15 I'm, years. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful years. And I'm and I, you know, I still learn stuff about you. I learn stuff about you too. <laughs> I do. We but are complex me, people. <laughs> but it usually makes me laugh what I what I learn. But I am looking forward to actually talking to more singles. Yes, um, we we definitely want to do that because we, you and I, really have a mission to help others. And I hope that other people do as uh-huh. well. I hope we all have a mission to help others. But you and I definitely have that. And I think right now we're feeling that 
perhaps single people really need some encouragement and some help out there. Yeah. You yeah. know, because I, I don't believe we're meant to be alone. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're meant to have somebody in our corner. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us. Yeah. Whether it's a romantic relationship or not. Yeah. Um, now, Jill, you and I were talking the other day about we are glad that we never had to do the online, online dating. Dating. Yes. Um, but then right after I said, I said that to you. Mm -hmm. But then right after I said that, I said, but I do believe you and I were destined to meet and that somehow or another we would have ended up together anyway. I truly believe that. Yes. Um. Yes, I because agree. Because any other time, I would not have been working in a bookstore. Correct. Any other time in my life. Correct. So, and and that is that is I believe that to be true. But uh, in addition to that, um, people in this country of a certain age, um, that's all we've ever done. They've ever done. They've ever done. Yes. Plus us, we're of that certain age, Jill. Oh. People of a certain age have only dated in person. Oh, I thought you meant online. Yeah, okay. I, I should have clarified. Yes. Okay. In yes, we've, we've only done that in person. Uh, so, And some people have only done it online. That's all they know. Yes. Yes. So this is why I feel that um, all of us that are of that generation. that, that Which generation? The generation that we're in mm -hmm. um, have almost a responsibility to help. The single people there now that are so. Struggling. Do you think it was easier for us? Um. Yeah, I, I actually do. Um, because whether you meet online or in person, you still have to get together in person. Exactly. <laughs> it Ex still ends up the same way. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, just the thought of um, relationships being disposable kind of makes me cringe. Yes. Um, you know, it's like, hey, people are just throw throw away, throw yes. away people. Yes. Um, you know, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna meet this person because they're hot, <laughs> and strictly just because they're hot. You know, nothing else. You know, I I, I have a thing I say. Uh, that couple has as much future as a small puddle on a hot summer day. But, okay, but it's, I don't agree with that because perhaps that hot, like I, th I thought you were hot and we're married. You met me in a bookstore, <laughs> but you were still hot, <laughs> and you weren't buying books. So I was buying. You books. didn't buy books that first time. Uh, I do not wish to buying, discuss this. Although you know, I like music too. You were buying music, y yeah. but anyway. Um, but what my point is that even if it starts out out superficial like that just from appearance alone and you know perhaps that person might be the person for you they're just hot i'm talking about the person that knows they're just hot they have nothing in common they're just hot and they want to get next to that hot body that's it so you're saying that in even though they're saying they're hot they really just want to hook up yes they uh, really just want to hook up but maybe that hot person is really looking for a serious relationship and right. they and they just keep getting thrown away used and thrown away right because people because people they're see, hot people view them that way only, yes that that's all they're yeah good for. And I, I, when in I, reality they just really they want to settle down they want to be in a committed relationship right yes. and, and you know but that goes vice versa you know um many people are really intimidated by you know highly educated women which i've never understood yeah just just really intimidated by it so this woman can be like probably everything they need in a relationship uh, but we've talked about needs versus wants exactly so and for what i still don't understand why why there are some people in this world who believe that an intelligent woman can't also be beautiful or vice versa. Why can't a beautiful woman also be smart? My, all of my friends, I believe, are beautiful and smart. Yes, yes. Beautiful and smart. And how, the majority of my how, friends are how, single. However, to uh, 
some people's shortcoming, and I'm kind of speaking about males in a heterosexual relationship, but I, I guess it could be uh, in any relationship, whether it's you know gay, lesbian, the same thing. Um, if you're intimidated by a person because of their intelligence, um, there's a possibility that person may not be the person for you because you are intimidated by them. Well, sure, you, you should you want to feel like you're on equal footing, but a lot of times... Like you and I, Jill, we're not on equal footings. You're, yes, we are. You are so much more intelligent than I no, that it I I'm pale not. and com- I, that is not true. That is this is why I bow is, to you oh every day. Oh my goodness! Every, you have every never bowed day. to me. Oh yes, in every, seventeen years of every, knowing you, you have never every, ever. Every. The only time you bowed to me, <laughs> and it wasn't even a bow. When you got on your hands and knees, on your knees. On my hands. That's what I did. I got on my hands and knees to propose to you. I thought you were falling, remember? (laughs) Because you have never bowed to me. I thought you were falling. I bow to you every day. Day, I not. worship you. I Don't bow to you. It, I worship you, you every have day. You've never done that. Don't believe it, Be- listeners. Because you He's are making a huge you joke. Are so intelligent. I love it. I am. I. I. I will. Com- I will tell anyone. Yes, I am intelligent. Mm-hmm. And yes, I have several degrees. Mm-hmm. But I'm no smarter than you. In fact, you're more br- brilliant. I believe. Than me. Uh, you just say that so I don't feel bad. That's not you, no, you're trying that's to not you're true. trying to keep me from you know feeling bad. That's not true. You're trying to I truly believe that. I told you very you early are, on in our relationship that I think you're brilliant. I learn from you, you all the time. You are trying to but you pump know, up my self esteem. I don't think you've ever had low self esteem, have you? <laughs> yes, I've had self esteem. As a low child, se- maybe? Uh, well, uh, I wouldn't say. Certainly not I wouldn't I've say known. low self esteem. I would say anything in my life, I was insecure about certain things. Well, I think we all have some yeah. insecurities about something. Yeah, but yeah, so, uh, you know, some relationships, you know, just won't happen now relationships lost you know wasted because one person is intimidated by the other oh i don't what do you mean by wasted because i think well, even when we're in bad relationships it's not a wasted one because hopefully you learn something hey from it. look i've been in a lot of bad relationships that you learn and from, i right? have learned from those bad relationships then it's not wasted but i much rather would have had just one great relationships where I didn't have to go through that pain, where I didn't Hello, have to learn enter Jill. the high. I said just one from the start, from the beginning. Oh, you didn't say from the start. You <laughs> from have the one. Be- just That's from the who, beginning where I didn't. Of, but all of those previous when, relationships got you to be who you are with me. Ex- exactly, exactly. It did. Um, but, uh, you know, and, well, that gets into something else with um, – singles um single people really do need to look at where they are in their life whether it's career or school where they where they are what's important to them at that particular time in their life because the person they're looking for needs to kind of be in that place also so or what I'm saying is willing to help them even like yes, I surround myself I'm, well, I'm, with people who are in better places than me. Yes. But but what I'm talking and they about, pump me up. what I'm talking about is being of the same mindset, wanting the same things in life sure. at the same sure. time. So you can have like me, for instance, um, I start making money very early in my life. Yes. So the women that were my age were like still in school and, you know, right. And talking about making a living and when they get out of college, what they're going to do and all that. I was already there. Right. So I didn't have much in common with them because of our different places in life. So I dated women that were older that, you know, were at the same place in their lives that I was. I, and that, yes, that I worked. understand that. 
Well, let's get to our second segment that we call Give It a Rest and a Resolution. We've spoken a lot about different aspects of being single in today's era. Yes. So what's your conclusion, resolution? I was ask, actually going to ask you that first. Quite often I like to hear what you say first. Well, my conclusion about the single life shuffle is that I do think it's a great thing that that statistically single people are taking the time to get to know someone and and wanting that commitment level there it seems like there are fewer people statistically who are afraid of commitment and i think that's a great thing but in terms of staying in those committed relationships i do think it's very important to not only be yourself but really get to still keep an eye and and try to get to know the person more and more. You and I made the point that we've been married 15 years, dated two years before that. That's 17 years. And we're still open to learning about each other. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very good. Um, You know, one of my conclusions about this is that I was really steadfast in that two year rule. You know, I had, different levels. So if you're a senior citizen, two-year rule goes out the window. (laughs) But while you're young in that dating age and you're young, um, I was kind of steadfast in that two-year rule. But I'm beginning to see that, hey, there's more than one way. There's another way that can work. So that um, getting to know a person online and then getting to know them on, you know, taking quite a lot of long time to get to know them online and then meeting them in person and everything still works. You still right. have that connection right? to move forward a little quickly because if they, they go into hyperdrive kind of, OK, we're good. Let's right. get married. Let's have a life together. Done, done, done. It's a different way than I would do it, but right. it's working. Right. It's working. So right. that's a that's a good thing. I'm I'm happy to see that. Wonderful. Well, let's get to our third segment that we call I'm trying to help you. Do you have advice? Of course I do. And I've given this advice before. Uh-oh, it's not run, is it? Of course it's run. <laughs> Look. I I still say the same thing. Look, if you are, are 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 getting to know someone online and you start seeing those red flags, run. Just run. Grab that red flag and go for a sprint. <laughs> Just run from that person because there is there is nothing invested yet. You, you haven't lost anything. So just run, cut it short, done. Are you saying the minute you see a red flag or just wait a little bit? No, nah, the minute you see it, just just run. Okay. Just out. Save okay. yourself a lot of time and heartache. That's Well, that's true. Well, my advice is, well, not the opposite, but a little different than what you just said. Um, okay. You and I, from the very beginning, have had... Well, our listeners might think they're silly, but to us, they're meaningful conversations. Okay. (laughs) We've had meaningful conversations from the very beginning. So I do believe that single people, when you take the time to get to know each other, it must, it must involve meaningful, relate, meaningful conversations. Ask the questions you really want to know. And, and listen to the answers. And if the answer is something you don't want to hear and it's something that's on your, you know, deal breaker list, then yes, that is the time to run because you're not going to change that person. You don't, you mm-hmm. shouldn't change people. You can change behaviors, but you shouldn't change people. That is correct. So, uh, so listen to the answers, but if they're really things that, that, uh, you know, you would like to hear, don't be afraid to keep going. All right. Our fourth segment that we call. So what what do you you think? think? What What do do you think? think? Because I'm right. Because I'm right. Phone number. 404-594-2247. Right. And we definitely want to hear from you, especially single people. Tell us what you want us to talk about. Yes. And and also those of you not 
uh, single, married in a committed relationship, please let your single friends know or your single family members know about this episode. Yes. Get them in our know. podcast in general. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, you've been listening to I'm Right. I'm Right. I'm Jill Cox Cordova. I'm Anthony Cordova. Shout out to Gifford Ivan Cordova III for the music, Nick Zinke for the art, and to you too, listeners. Thank you very much. Thank you. We love you all. Bye. Bye.